Hi guys, welcome to episode three of the Carla Garrick Show. As you can see, uh, I iterated. I don't know about that intro. I know I like the photos. Uh, that was a little late night project last night uh, that I probably will start to improve a little more on. Not crazy about the Muzak. Gonna have to find something that works better than that. But one of the promises I made to all of you back home was that uh, failure is an option, but that we're gonna iterate and that we are just genuinely gonna try and uh, come to the show every week with some energy, some thoughts, um, and try and improve things over time. This week, we'll be talking about several things. First of all, I will be talking a little bit about my favorite Dr. Fauci and um, and some information about the, the vaccine and all of that. And then, as I mentioned to my Facebook followers, um, I am currently in a fast. So I thought it would be interesting to talk a little bit about the science behind fasting, why people do it. Um, and then we will be uh, talking also a little bit about another favorite project that I've been wanting to do for a long time. Uh, one of the criticisms that people levy against libertarians is uh, that we're selfish. And, you know, I am a libertarian, small L libertarian, and uh, I am not selfish. And so I take it kind of personally <laughs> when people, you know, say things like that. So when I originally heard that criticism, it made me think of two things. One was Thomas Sell, who's a famous economist, you know, said once, why is it that people say it's greed when you want to keep your own money, but it's not greed when other people want to take your money and spend it on other things? And I think that's a very legitimate question and one that we should ask ourselves about more. So in thinking about that, I was like, you know, maybe I should write an ebook called Selfish. And that sort of took me down this rabbit hole of thinking about different words that have the word self in them from self-conscious, self-control, which is the one I'll be talking about today, uh, self-ownership, which is something I talk about a fair amount, um, and so I think over the, these episodes, I'm going to start to really look at some of those words. We can define them, we can explore them, and we can talk about what they mean to you, what they mean to me, and really, really try and instill a sense of self back in people. Because I think one of the really bad things about socialism um, and communism and the sort of notion of uh, giving up ourselves to this greater society or, or whatever the notion behind that is, is actually quite damaging. Why do I say that? Because, you know, people talk about, uh, you know, oh, we need to do this or that for the greater good, right? But I believe that liberty and individualism is the greater good. Because when you're saying you want to do something for a group of people, what is a group of people but a bunch of individuals who are grouping together? And so the smallest minority is also is always us, right? It's always the individual. And so really as a society, we want to figure out how do we let everyone be themselves and work together instead of saying, well, you're not entitled to be you because you know we have to give this up to this, this sort of greater good. Um, so that's sort of the lay of the land for the show. And uh, what I'm gonna open with now is just, uh, you know, you guys will hear me talk about crony capitalism a lot. Crony capitalism, which I actually call crapitalism, is uh, when you have this merging of big government and big business. And when they get together and they start to collude against us, the little guy, uh, is when you really start to see problems. People differ about what they would say the definition of fascism is, but I think fascism traditionally, at least under Mussolini and Italy and everything, was this sort of merging of big business and big government. And I think we need to be very, very vigilant here in the States to make sure that that 
I mean, it is happening. It is a reality. Uh, it's undeniable. But I thought I would show you this little clip just to really drive the point home. I'll also say that, you know, uh, I don't watch a lot of television. So the times I really do see like push television as opposed to, and don't get me wrong, I love my shows, but I choose when I consume them and I choose how I consume them. And I don't typically watch advertisements, right? So the times that I do see the junk that is out there is usually when I'm traveling. And I was down in Florida over the weekend um, to go see one of my heroes, Tom Woods, uh, did his 2000th podcast and um, and I wanted to go support him so I went out for that and that meant that I was watching uh, a lot of TV and I have well not a lot of TV but it was on in my hotel room right and I have to say I was actually shocked at how many ads there were for big pharma um, and for like really, really weird diseases. I mean, honestly, as someone who's a bit of an outsider in that world, to me, it seems like people are taking pills to take pills to take pills to uh, circumvent side effects. So one medication is making your legs shake or your head twitch or, you know, whatever it is. And then, you know, there is this other medication that people are taking for this, for this, for this. And, and so my perception of what I was seeing sort of on the legacy news or on, you know, mainstream television was twofold. There were a lot of pharma, big pharma ads, and there were a lot of junk food ads. And I don't know if this is true or not, but I did see it on the internet today, so it must be true, right? <laughs> Kidding. Uh, but that you can now buy a Papa John's pizza on installments. I have no idea if that's true, but if it is, you know, the world needs to end soon. So that is a long lead in for this to just give you a sense of where we are in terms of Big Pharma. CBS Health Watch, sponsored by Pfizer. Anderson Cooper 360, brought to you by Pfizer. ABC News Nightline, brought to you by Pfizer. Making a difference, brought to you by Pfizer. CNN Tonight, brought to you by Pfizer. Early start, brought to you by Pfizer. Friday night on Aaron Burnett out front. Brought to you by Pfizer. This week with George Stephanopoulos is brought to you by Pfizer. This weather report brought to you by Pfizer. Today's countdown to the royal wedding is brought to you by Pfizer. And now a CBS Sports update brought to you by Pfizer. Meet the Press data download brought to you by Pfizer. This portion of CBS This Morning sponsored by Pfizer. On how to find the hidden sugars in the American family diet. Sponsored by Pfizer. So clearly uh, this program is not sponsored by Pfizer, but that really is supposed to give you just a little taste of, uh, of this corporatism that we're seeing, of this issue where, you know, the, the, the people who are supposed to be giving you independent uh, information about things are being funded by companies that are making massive, massive, massive profits from what is going on right now. You know, Moderna, by way of example, not just to pick on Pfizer, uh, their stock price went up from, uh, I think it was like $30 to over $300 over the past nine months. So you need to understand when you are getting this information from your mainstream sources that perhaps they don't have your best interests at heart, but perhaps they have their corporate interests at heart. Um, so along the same vein, everyone who's been following along for a while knows I'm not really a huge fan of Dr. Fauci. I do believe that he uh, has his little mitts all over um, a lot of what has happened and transpired over the last two years. And the reality of what has happened is that we as Americans are losing our independence. We are losing our individualism. We are losing our rights. We are losing our liberties. And that is a problem. And it is primarily because of this dude, Mr. Fauci. And, you know, the, the propaganda is just, it's, it's, it's insidious at this stage. 
you know, they made a documentary about him that is getting, I think it was on, on um, the, the, the legacy, the, the critics, the propagandists gave it something like 92%. But if you look at the audience score, it gets 4% for that new Fauci documentary. Now also, People like me who have an alternate view or an anti-establishment view about uh, what is happening are being censored in a serious fashion. I mean, everything gets a warning now. And if you think it's ridiculous, I will tell you this. There was a meme going around earlier this week that actually said, people will soon discover why your great grandmother saved aluminum foil and kept bacon grease. Now, two things. I still save my foil because you can use it a few times and it's expensive. I always cook with bacon grease or animal lard. Um, and my grandmother taught me to do those things. And so that was just, you know, it was a grandma in a field or in a kitchen. I mean, it's just a harmless photo with a harmless message. That photo now comes with a warning, a misinformation warning on Facebook. So. You know what doesn't get a warning on Facebook? The following clip that should make your head explode. So this is about two, and a, two minutes and 20 seconds, and uh, this is Dr. Fauci so now we have two vaccines telling you how it is. that are really quite effective. The mRNA vaccine, highly effective, extraordinarily eff efficacious, 94 to 95 percent for mild to moderate disease and virtually 100 percent efficacious because the real world effectiveness is even more impressive than the results of the clinical trial. Uh, I hope that that is something you haven't seen before and that this is information that you can really take to heart. Look, um, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I am not per se anti-vaccine and I am pro-science. What I am is I'm anti a controlled messaging that is not giving people all the information they need for informed consent. What do you need for informed consent? You probably need to actually have gone through clinical trials without uh, doing it on a human experiment level. You also need good information that is coming back from the field, right? So if we're actually doing these experiments with a gene therapeutic thing, injection that has never been used before, these mRNA uh, uh, injections, then, you know, we need informed consent, which means we need to know if there are adverse reactions. So one would think 
that our federal government would want to get the best information possible so that we can make informed decisions. And the reason I will not shut up about this is because they are talking about now giving these injections to children. California and Governor Newsom actually just uh, instituted a mandate to say that uh, children, school going children in public schools in California must receive this vaccine. So that is extremely troubling. And yesterday there were thousands and thousands and thousands of California parents who showed up at the Capitol to protest this. And I'm sure you saw that on your regular news. So OSHA, that wonderful institution that is supposed to, you know, look at occupational safety hazards and whatever it stands for. But there are the guys who are like, oh, if we're going to force you to do something in the workplace, then we got to make sure it's safe, right? So you may recall that the OSHA experts, uh, when all the debate about the masks were happening, they actually came out. Um, I personally saw a panel discussion with OSHA experts who said, the masks, these little paper masks don't work. If you want to use a mask that is actually gonna stop an aerosol virus, you need to be wearing an N95 mask, which obviously people have not been doing and that is not what is mandated. So yesterday, OSHA decided in all its wisdom that they uh, are telling uh, employers, so these are now private companies who work with the federal government where it's now mandated that you must get the vaccine. Yesterday, they were like, oh, you know what? You don't have to track any adverse reactions if you have mandated vaccines for your employers. And if they get sick or they have an adverse reaction, then uh, we just don't have to count it. We just don't have to count it. And you don't have to count it till sometime in May 2022. The other troubling and shocking thing that is coming out of uh, these crazy people's uh, mouths is that they are saying, oh, okay, based on that video I just showed you guys where we saw the efficacy and the safe, well, we'll talk about efficacy, go from 100% to under 50%. Um, the warnings have actually gone from things like uh, safe and effective for all to safe for most. Uh, they've dropped effective as far as I can tell in its entirety because clearly that claim cannot be substantiated anymore. But now they're talking about mixing these vaccines. So they're saying, oh, if you got a booster shot, if you started with Pfizer, hey, go ahead and just get some uh, get some Moderna up in there or a little AZ AstraZeneca, you know, why not? And honestly, I think that is an awful idea. We barely know what this stuff is supposed to be doing uh, given the circumstances right now. So to really add a whole bunch of different things into the mix to me seems like an awful idea. So that is my little rant about uh, where we are on the vaccines uh, here from the Carla Garrick show. Um, I'd like to switch gears now a little bit and talk to you guys about health and talk to you a little bit about fasting. So for folks back home who've been following my career and my journey for a while now, many of you know I uh, decided three, four years ago that I really wanted to change my life. I was drinking way too much alcohol. I was overweight. I was unhealthy. And a lot of that unhealth actually stemmed from an adverse effect from an MMR vaccine that I was forced to get in New York City before I moved to New Hampshire. Now, at the time, I couldn't correlate those things, but I did look back and go, what changed around that time that may have influenced why I was suddenly getting autoimmune diseases, why I was suddenly getting allergies that I'd never had. Um, I had rheumatoid arthritis was developing. I had a lot of joint pain and all of that. And so I really did a deep dive to be like, okay, what can I do? How do I take control of my life, my corpus, my body, and how do I make myself healthy? Because when you're healthy, 
healthy, you're actually in balance. You're in balance with the universe and you're also in balance with yourself and your milieu. And once you're in balance, your fear factor, this sort of that they keep putting into our brains, right? Be scared, be scared, be scared, starts to go away. I have a note on my white board at home that I wrote at the start of uh, the, the pandemic, and it said, uh, being healthy means not being scared. And I really took that to heart. So one of the things and one of the health changes I made was to start to incorporate fasting into my lifestyle. So it started with, and I'm sure everyone is like, what? You don't eat? So let's start with the definition. What is fasting? Fasting is the voluntary absence of eating, right? So it's a voluntary choice, which is very important because there are some people who probably shouldn't fast. Like if you're underweight or undernourished or you're breastfeeding or pregnant or, uh, you know, super skinny, if you have anorexia, you know, any of those kinds of things where, you know, you're like, eh, you're skinny enough, you should not probably fast and you should probably talk to your doctor before you do it. But for the rest of us, fasting is actually an awesome tool. So in my personal experience, I started with, um, with a little bit of intermittent fasting, which is uh, for a lot of people sort of a 16-8 schedule, which might mean you eat dinner around six or seven at night, and then you'd really go through to maybe lunchtime the next day, right? So you want to get a big window where you're not consuming calories. Why is that important? That's actually important because that is when your body decides to go around and munch up all the fat. That phase is called autophagy. And basically what it does is your body kicks into some kind of me metabolic year where it starts to go, oh, where's like, where's the junk that we can eat? Where are the fat cells? Where are the toxins? Where are the bad minerals? Um, where's the crystal deposits? And so we now know that there is a lot of science that backs up that fasting can be incredibly beneficial for you metabolically. It is also incredibly beneficial in terms of your sugar and your insulin. So there, there are a lot of documentaries out there. You can go find them for yourself, YouTube, Netflix, Amazon, wherever, that um, show that people who have type 2 diabetes, which is a self-inflicted chronic disease, it is caused by the way you eat and the me metabolic things you take in, um, we can reverse type 2 diabetes now purely through diet and through fasting. So with fasting, um, the world record, by the way, is 382 days. Now that is bananas long. I don't recommend that for anyone. But what you could do is you can start to build up, right? Maybe start with that 16 hour one. So that's what, what I did, right? So you sort of start and you, you go, okay, what is the stretch I can go through? Then I tried a one day one and that one wasn't actually that hard. It's less hard to fast if you're a fat adapted. What is fat adaption? That means that you're eating a low carb diet, medium protein and high good fats. What are high good fats? They're things like avo, coconut oil, like all the bacon grease from your great grandmother, lard, um, any of the good animal fats. What you want to avoid is you want to avoid saturated fats and you want to avoid all those trans fats, all the like just weird gross things where they've mesh together all kinds of stuff at a high heat. Um, that stuff is garbage. You should uh, avoid it at all costs. In fact, it is, I'm so sensitive to that now that I, um, I had bought some, some yummy almonds on my trip and, uh, and I had some real knee pain and I was like, what could that be from? And I realized, oh, I think it's from the, the, uh, the oils that they actually baked those nuts in. So, 
what are the advantages of fasting? I mean, the obvious one is losing weight. I don't actually do it for that reason, although, you know, I'm not going to say no. I could, everyone could stand to lose a little weight. But there are a lot of other health benefits. As I mentioned, you know, there is reversing something like type 2 diabetes. It can actually also help to go after like cancer cells or free radicals in your body. Um, and there's also a, I guess, like a, almost spiritual element to it. So I'm someone who has uh, enjoyed life. Uh, I definitely was a party girl as in my youth. And uh, let's just say, you know, we ha I, I have indulged in substances over the years. We'll, we'll just say they were all not in America, so didn't break any laws. How about that? So um, one of the things I actually like about fasting is it does give you a high energy for a few days. So typically I'll fast anywhere from from three to five days. I currently am on, uh, I stopped on eating late afternoon on Monday. So Monday, Tuesday, where are we on Wednesday? I'll probably go through to Friday. Typically on day three or four, I get like a monster headache. And one of the things that they say about fasting is you should absolutely listen to your body, right? So it'll tell you, eh, you know what, you need to eat. And then you, you should break your fast and you should make sure that you're nourishing yourself with good nutrients. So again, uh, you know, when I break a fast, I go back to a bone broth and then sort of ease into it. So that is just, you know, touching very briefly on what uh, the benefits of fasting are. Uh, in the end, it all comes down to self-control. Uh, so self-control is something that we'll talk about when, when, uh, when we talk about this issue a little more. But basically, it is your ability to, to control your own impulses. And that makes you the captain of your journey, the person who's leading your life. And that is what you want, right? You want that self ownership, that sense of self, uh, because that gives you a good place in the world to then go forth and do whatever it is you need to do in life. So what I needed to do in life today was to come here and to do a good quality The Carla Garrick Show. I am going to wrap up with my first fan mail. Um, and feel free to uh, send me your feedback, uh, either on YouTube or on Odyssey. Uh, you can always reach me at Carla Garrick, Carla at Carla Garrick .com. And this is from uh, the Honorable Leah Cushman in Weir. She is a uh, sitting state rep currently. And she made my day because she sent me this. And she said, hey, I want to tell you, I watched the first episode of the Carla Garrick show the other night, and it's one of the best things I've ever seen. Thanks, Leah. Super impressed by your courage, and I appreciate so much that you are boldly broadcasting liberty and your raw form in Manchester. It's amazing, and I just wanted to let you know you're killing it. Let's not kill it. Let's keep it all alive. Let's keep everyone happy, alive, and thriving. So I will see you guys next week. Thank you so much for joining me for the third episode of The Carla Garrick Show. Together, we can live free and thrive.